Math 31, welcome back to example eight. In an example eight, we're being asked to find the number of terms in the finite arithmetic sequence, six, 11, 16, up to 56. Now it says finite here because it's gonna stop at, at whatever term this is. It's not gonna go past 56. Um, when you see something without an endpoint, you might hear that referred to as an infinite sequence. And this one is a finite arithmetic sequence. But then again, I see my buzzwords, right? Arithmetic and sequence. So I think, all right, D and I think list. All right. Now, if I have an arithmetic sequence, I know I get this formula, a sub n equaling a sub one plus n minus one times D. Okay. Critical components of this are definitely a sub one and D. So let's see if we can spot them. Well, here is a sub one. That's a huge thing. And then I can also read D. To go from six to 11, I must have added five, right? And that's consistent, 11 to 16 is five. So I see D is five. All right, now I don't know what term this is, right? I know this is A sub one, A sub two, A sub three. And then eventually I get to A sub N being 56. I just don't know if this is the seventh term, the 20th term, the 15th term, I don't know what it is. And, and admittedly, I could count, like because it's not too far out, we could sit here and keep adding five and count how many terms out we needed to go. And that would totally be acceptable, but I wanna show you how to do it with a formula, because what if this was like a thousand terms out? I don't wanna count that many terms, so let's be more efficient. So let's see what we have. We know a sub one is six and we know d is five. So let's, let's work that, right? So we know a sub n will be equal to, oops, let me write a sub one. The actual value this time out is six plus n minus one times, what was our d value? Five. Let me simplify this just a little bit. So we have a sub n being six plus five n minus five. So if I work this a little bit more, I know a sub n is equal to one plus five n. Right, so there is my explicit formula, which is great. But we also happen to know the nth term. We just don't know what n itself is, but I know a sub n as a whole is 56. So I know this number can be 56, and that would allow me to solve for n. So let's take this one step further and say that we know 56 is equal to one plus five n. And then I can start to find the number of terms in this finite sequence. All right, so if I subtract the one, you can see that five n is going to be equal to 55, and that's going to get me n is equal to 11. Or another way of saying this is I have a finite sequence starting at six, adding five each time, I stop at 56, and this is a sub 11, right? So there are 11 terms in the sequence. That is literally the number of terms. So there are 11 terms. Oops, that's not how you spell terms. Terms in this sequence. All right. So we have used this nth term for the arithmetic sequence formula in all sorts of ways. All right, just now we solved for n. We've talked about how you can solve for a sub one if you need to, how you can solve for d, and how you can solve for a sub n. So we really wanna make sure we know how to manipulate this formula, which you can use whenever you have an arithmetic sequence. All right, so with that, we're gonna change lenses and we're gonna move away from explicit formulas like this to recursive formulas. All right, and again, when you have a recursive formula, each term is defined in terms of the preceding or previous term. All right, so I'll catch you in a little bit. See ya, bye.